Whether we study a simple complex organism or the world of life as a whole, we can identify a hierarchy of biological organization. At every level, structure and function are precisely coordinated. One way to study a particular level is by looking at its components. For example, we'll take a look at this car. And in order to study the function of this car as a whole, we need to study its parts. First, we'll take a look at what makes the car move from point A to point B. It's got wheels. We need to be able to see through it so that we know where we're going. So it's got <clears throat> windows. We need to we need to tell it where it's going or um, the direction of where uh, we're moving the car. So we need the steering wheel. Well, we need only one steering wheel. In order for it to move, to start, we need an engine, we need, trans, we need a motor. Um, it also needs a body to protect us from the outside. So think of it as the whole structure is the car. And in order to study how a car functions, we need to study its parts. Learning about a structure by studying its parts it's ca is called reductionism. So reductionism is learning about a structure to study its parts. So let's now apply this to biology. I'm going to draw the continents as best as I can. So this is the US. South America, Europe, Asia, Africa here, well, some parts of Africa. Let's apply our knowledge of reductionism to biology. Uh, this is the biosphere, which is all of Earth's ecosystems together. These are the ecosystems. So take, for example, this is uh, North America, South America, Africa, Europe. And uh, they each contain ecosystems. So there's the Northeast ecosystem, there's the South, there's the Amazon rainforest, there's the Sahara desert ecosystem. Within the ecosystem, it contains populations, and so populations are different species living uh, in an area at the same time. And within the population, you've got a single species, such as human beings or Homo sapiens. So this single species is called an organism. Within the organism, we have organ system. So I'm going to draw here the skeletal system. Within the organ system, we have a, an organ. So this is just, a, this is a heart. Within the heart, we have tissues, which are, which are an association of cells. So here are cells within the tissue. And then we also have the cells. Because we're multicellular complex organisms, we have, our cells have a nucleus. So we are considered eukaryotic organisms. Within the cell, we have, let's just, we have organelles. And so this is, a nucleus and within the nucleus we've got the DNA which are which are macromolecules DNA and then within the DNA we have molecules so molecules are I'll combine to form macromolecules. And within the macromolecules, we've got the atom. The atom has a nucleus, and it's got an electron cloud with electrons uh, 
floating around the electron cloud. Okay, so let's start with the atom. The atom is the smallest unit of a chemical element. And when two atoms, when atoms combine together, they form molecules. When molecules combine together, they form macromolecules. And in this example, we have DNA, which is composed of ribose, sugar, phosphate groups, and nitrogenous base. Uh, within macromolecules combine to form organelles. Many organelles work together to perform the various functions of the cell. Cells associate of the cell here. Cells associate to form tissues. In most complex organisms, tissues organize into functional structures called organs. So in this example, we have the heart. Humans have several organ systems. Uh, so that's organ systems. 